Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are live at the Bald Explorers chat show in the evening. It's Tuesday the 21st, I think it is, of February 2018, as I do this live, GMT, 8 o'clock in the evening. Now, I should just let you know that I feel that I'm going to cock everything up today. I'm just letting you know I feel a little underprepared uh, for today's show, but I shall uh, do my best to uh, wing it. As they say in the business. Uh, hopefully at this point you haven't actually tuned in. You're still trying to find where the hell is the stream? Where is he? Why can't we find him? Where is the old shiny-headed domed bloke? You know, the one with one eye. I'm hoping that all systems are go and that actually there are people out there and that there is somebody at least watching. Because I have been rushing around Sussex today in order to prepare up for today's show. Yeah, who needs a real job? No, absolutely. There am I. <laughs> Suddenly somebody said, here, Richard, I think you should know about this. And uh, off I trundled to go like some roving reporter I was. You'll, you'll see in today's show, hopefully. So, but um, I feel I've got, you can't see it all over here, but I've got books and things and, and all that kind of nonsense. Now, you may also have noticed um, there's something different in the studio. Well, there is something different. Uh, I'm sick and tired of people saying to me that uh, <clears throat> your picture is wonky and reflecting the light, which is uh, which is true because that's what it's been doing. So I've I've got shot of it, and instead, this is a Roman map of Great Britain, well the southern half of Great Britain, Scotland is too far uh, north to see, you can't actually see it, and in fact uh, the top of the map is uh, just out of screen, held up with gaffer tape, no masking tape, I tell a lie, anyway are you well, let's see if you're there, I haven't even looked, so let's have a little look at the old floorboard and see if there's anybody out there, yes you are, aren't you good? <laughs> So, uh, hello to Henry, hello to David, hello to James, hello to Kevin, hello to Jason, hello to Lee, hello to Frank. I'm just, the, the names that just happen to be in front of me, it's so nice to see you, James, Ian and Carol, that's marvellous. So pleased to see you on another day. Obviously, you, like me, you don't have a real life. You have nothing else to do to occupy yourselves. And the box is, you know, it's rubbish. Anyway, you can you can watch the box later. What do you think the iPlayer is for? Whereas I am live. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to talk to you uh, about uh, heritage today because um, quite an interesting thing. I got up this morning, got out of bed as you do, and I sat down, I'd uploaded the walks. Don't worry, there's going to be a nice walk for you tomorrow to view on the old uh, Bald Explorer channel, of course. Um, but I got up this morning and I was answering some emails and then ping, a Facebook ping came through. And I think it was, um, can't, no, I'm going to get his name wrong, but I knew I'd going to make a fool of myself. Is it Robert or Rupert uh, Newman? or new something. Anyway, uh, he said, here, have a look at this. And he sent me a link to uh, a, a windmill, as it happened, a windmill that is in desperate need of help. It's called the, uh, the New Mill at Cross in Hand in East Sussex and I'm going to talk about that in a moment and I'm going to show you a picture of it and we're going to I'm going to show you some footage because I got into my car and I drove up to um, up to the edge of Ashdown Forest near Heathfield where Cross in Hand is in Sussex I don't know if you've ever been there um, I didn't actually get as far as going into the village to look at the village because I was all very excited to go and get some photographs of this uh, windmill which is still extant and <clears throat> The sun, the sun was shining, ladies and gentlemen. The sun was shining. Um, and I thought it was going to be a dull day. I thought it was going to be, because I was actually supposed to be in Liss today. Liss in Hampshire. So instead of going to Hampshire, I've gone to the other side of Sussex, to East Sussex. Whereas I'm, as you know, in glorious West Sussex. Not that uh, we're at odds with anyone. It's just I haven't done very much in East Sussex. So I'm pleased to have crossed over that threshold and uh, gone there to, to find out some things. And I want to go back because uh, I have to say the countryside in East Sussex is particularly stunning. And then 
I want to go further. I want to venture into Kent. Yeah. I have been into Kent before. I had my passport at the ready and I'd taken the, the inoculizers and uh, the mosquito nets and everything. So I was, all, I was all ready. But I didn't have to do that going into East Sussex. So um, heritage. Let's talk about heritage because um, you know I like to go on my walks and I like to stroll through the British landscape. And our, we're so lucky here. We're so lucky with our heritage because it's, it's seeping. But here's a question for you. Here's a question. And I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. Are we losing our heritage? Because I read an article earlier that says that we are losing the heritage because, and this is your 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 bulk, your you will bulk at this. We're losing the heritage because we cannot. There's nowhere to store it. And, and when you think about it, people are unearthing things all the time, aren't they? They're going out with their uh, metal detectors, um, which, you know, that's a dodgy old subject. When I was a lad, my dad took me metal detecting back in the 70s, and we thought nothing of getting a trowel and digging down into the ground. Well, I know. I can, I can see you. You're all going, oh, no, what a fool. You shouldn't do that. Mucking about with our heritage. Well, my dad wasn't... Um, you know, really into heritage. He was just trying to find something valuable to make a fast buck. And I was a young man who knew no different. I just thought, you know, Dad knew what he was doing. He said it was legal. He said it was fine to take the uh, the Sutton Who uh, jewels all... Oh, shush. No, don't tell anyone. No. <laughs> of course, we didn't go there. We were in... We, we barely found anything. Mostly, uh, Dad had bought a cheap metal detector, to be fair, and all that came out was silver paper. It just go, it was going on like this. Beep! Beep, beep. And every time we dug up silver paper, silver paper, all sorts of silver paper. In the end, he just mine sweeped on the beach and found the odd tuppence and threepence and that sort of thing. In fact, some of those coins I don't think were picked up back in the back in that in those days. Anyway, I'm glad he didn't actually mine sweep and get a mine. Otherwise, we may have been blown to kingdom come. Could have blown, could have blew my hair off. Won't have any of that. Anyway, <clears throat> so. But the thing is, people are digging up stuff, people are finding stuff, and they're offering them to museums, and they're offering them to uh, archives, and they're being turned away because archives and places like that have actually nowhere to store these things. This, and Now, every little notebook, every little uh, clay pipe, every little tiny fragment of a Romano-British uh, pottery it is a story. It, it tells something, where it came from, the depth it was found, the archaeological evidence, all that says something and it may uncover another community that we may not know about. It says something about the, the British story, our story. And of course if they're turning it away and there's nowhere to place it and people are going, oh well, if the museum didn't want it, I'll just chuck it in the bin. Well, that's that's terrible because that is knowledge that we will never get back. So that's that's one thing. But of course, of course, there are buildings uh, and um, erections, if I'm allowed to say that word here publicly on Facebook without being banned. Um, there are certain things like that that are still in existence and they are rotting and decaying and people are desperate, absolutely desperate to restore them to how they were because some things are so relevant and so much part of our life um, and I'm thinking in particular now of this uh, windmill which we're going to look, look, look at in a second because these machines, these windmills, these old machines like that, A, so many of them are gone and, and yet they were, they were everywhere, they were, they were lovely, they were everywhere. So many of them have gone, every village would have had access to one, every farmer, you imagine every farmer he needed access. If he was growing corn, he needed to be able to get his corn to the windmill to have it ground down into flour so he could sell it or that uh, or the merchants could buy it or whatever. And in those days, if you go back a few hundred years before the motor transport, the roads were rubbish, uh, especially in Sussex, you know, with all the clay and the, and the, the, the mud and stuff, they were impassable most of the time. So you couldn't go with uh, big loads of corn on your back up to uh, the nearest town and have it done. You needed to go locally, only two or three miles, you know, if that, if you could, because you had a little farm truck. Your corn is quite, a, you know, you need loads and loads of sacks of corn to sort of 
grind it all the way down into into the different grades of flour. So you needed to do all of that. So you, you, your farms, the the, uh, the millers, clever people, they they put their mills, and they were pretty pretty good place in Sussex, especially on the you know near the South Downs or the windy paths or the high points. We've got plenty of undulating land where they can shove them, so that uh, so that the old uh, farmers can get their get their crops in and um, get the grain in once they've thrashed them and sorted out the grain they can get them up to the mill so that they can be milled so very important and of course what they manufactured these wonderful machines these these machines that harnessed you know this uh, they're the, the sort of one of the earliest um, machines to harness the free energy of the wind I mean so so clever so clever I think and anyway uh, and these machines would have ground the corn, bringing to us the staple of life, bread. Without bread, you know, where would we be? So I think it's very important, very important, that we should um, uh, that we should try and restore as many of these w uh, windmills, proper windmills. I'm not talking about wind farms. We've got a gopping great wind farm on the south coast here in Worthing, right opposite of these horrible things that are going around blighting now I know some people like them I don't like them I think they're awful um, but but the old-fashioned post mills and smock mills you know absolute and tower mills absolutely they were just I don't know what it was but maybe it's the modern man looking back at older things there was an aesthetic that they had you know they had a purpose and they were built but in that purpose they were amazing you know they were just so aesthetic anyway 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 let's uh, let's not muck about any longer uh, first of all before we go anywhere I just let's just have a check to see if uh, you're still there and still with me um, out there let's have a look here we've got Ed Warren he says um, oh he's talking to Frank oh hello sorry I pressed the button <laughs> it's already playing the music uh, Carol says um, our country thieves on is on our heritage we need to protect it more from the whole country um, before it turns into Milton Keynes. Well, exactly. You know, it's not just the people who are nicking things, but some of I th personally, I think some of the modern architecture is a bit dre dreadful. Anne is there, says, hello, Richard. We should look after our old relics uh, like her, she says. I'm sure you're not really an old relic. You, you are a mature and intelligent person. Have you ever been to the beam pump in Petworth? I filmed outside it. The, the cold, sh was it the co I was only talking about it today to somebody. Um, the, the, the cold, Oh, what's it, the coal shutter, something? Um, I haven't been there. Right, okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, I want to show you some pictures, first of all. Hang on, let me just uh, get my thing up. First of all, let me, uh, let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, just what a windmill looks like in their heyday when they're working. So that, there you can see that's a nice uh, tower mill. And uh, there's a couple of smock mills working away. Nice and sedate. And here you can see what's going up, presumably, is the corn. And it's being lifted up, ready to be bunged into the hopper so that it can come down again using gravity uh, to grind it. Now, this is the mill I want you to look at because although this is a piece of Pathé news, and I've got some dreadful 70s music over it, which is inappropriate, I understand that. Um, this is the new mill at Cross in Hand. Um, and it's a very distinct, it's a lovely post mill. Look at those uh, four sweeps going. It almost, it's just, it almost looks like a toy, doesn't it? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I do believe that that is the Cross in Hand one. There were two at Cross in Hand. Um, there was a much, an older one. Uh, and then there was this one, which I believe is um, said to be, he says, consulting his notes very quickly, uh, probably the largest timber post mill in the whole country, which is one reason why it's very important that we save it. Look at that, it's majestic, isn't it? Um, and the thing on the end is a fan, oh, I, 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 I don't know all the technical terms, it's a fan, anyway, there we go, it's run out of... Uh, run out of puff is a fan tackle I think it's called a fan tackle anyway that's the thing that helps uh, maneuver the uh, the windmill round so that the sails are always facing in the wind because if they're not facing in the wind there's a chance that the windmill might fall over or 
more than that it just actually won't work which is um not really any good so that's the windmill in its heyday and it looks very romantic doesn't it that it looks absolutely delightful well um shall we have a look i rushed out in my car ladies and gentlemen i rushed out in my car and um went up there because i heard about the fundraiser they want to raise some money um to try th now this sort of various stages of this there's various stages the first stage is just a temporary amount of money just to make some basic repairs and some do some waterproofing really to stop the thing from collapsing because it's imminently about to collapse and then there's a much broader plan longer plan to raise something like a hundred thousand pounds to actually restore it to its former glory so they're basically they're desperate for cash it will tell you how you can help if you wish to help or at least perhaps pass the message on if you can't personally help then maybe you can pass the message on you can check them out by the way there is a facebook page it's cross it's save cross in hands um windmill if you do a search save cross in hands windmill should come up and then you'll see that there's a fundraising page on indiegogo which is a crowdfunding site they only want to get about a thousand pounds initially so you know any anything will help anyway i went up in my car um I, now again i'm gonna stick a little bit of um a little bit of music underneath this just to sort of try and make it interesting because uh, the the footage is a bit empty I have edited it up and after the show today you'll get the pucker video I'm gonna put that up but here's me walking up um, to I went to cross in hand as you can see so this is just some of the rushes that I had you can see that there's a lot of windmill related businesses windmill feeds which is um, a, 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 looks like a thriving business and then up the end there you can see uh, you've got the, the white mill at the far end and then you've got the base of the earlier mill the old mill which is now just the roundhouse there and i believe that's used for storage i'm walking up there towards it you see you pass that one first now i believe that's a hand now i'm not quite sure whether that's hand winded or hand winded um and i don't quite really know what that means whether that's that you to get it going you have to do it by hand is what i assume then walking up to this is the mill that you just saw it's no longer got its sweeps up which um they i think were taken down some time ago curious it's um it's very high because it's on a two-story roundhouse you can see that there's the brick at the bottom and then there's this galvan um corrugated or galvanized iron or whatever past the little uh, lean-to house we're walking around to the back and uh, that's the um well, that's the sort of ladder thing it's got a technical term of course somebody will tell me what that is if we have a look up here it's interesting because this is it's got weatherboarding on the back but it's metalled all the way around the front you can see what uh, a terrible and shameful uh, state that it has been into now uh, you know not deliberately but through lack of funds it's uh, time time has um, has not been too kind so we're just wandering around there and I come back around to the front they they have been doing some work uh, bits and pieces but they really could do with the money you see a lot of the stuff I think if you go on their Facebook page you can see that on the inside they've been doing a lot of bracing and, and stuff and there and there it is um, it does look very sad and very sorrowful but you, you know you've got to have the bigger picture the bigger picture is that it is there and it is standing and and really you know there isn't that much to do. well to say there isn't that much to do of course there's a colossal amount to do i mean i have absolutely no idea what there is to do but you've got you've got something whilst it's standing it's a monument it's grade two listed and whilst it's standing it's it's definitely there and it's definitely worth preserving you know if it had collapsed and fallen in the impetus to actually rebuild it would be i think for for anybody too much and and i don't know whether there would be if you're looking for lottery funding or other funding whether people would say well if there's nothing actually there anymore you know it may, that presumably i would think makes it very very difficult but if you've got the structure of it there even though it may look aesthetically not terribly pleasing you know basically it's 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 there so that's that's interesting i'd be interested in your thoughts on that what do you think about that have you had a look um 
Couldn't find a windmill emoji, says Rob Moore. No, going to tune out and eat my tea. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Back later, no problem. Ashcombe Mill in Lewis is beautiful. It's funny you should say that because I took a walk to Ashcombe Mill the other day and I have edited up that video and that video walk is coming to you next week. So look out for that. Um, looks like it might fall down under its own weight. Well, that's why they need the money. That's why it needs some, it needs help. So um, do check them out. Um, what else? It's been clad in metal to save on the cost of wooden cladding. Is that true? It was, I think it was built in 1832 or something. I've got the notes down here. I've got some more pictures actually. Let's, uh, let's have a look at some of the other pictures I've got. Uh, where did I put them? Here we go. So uh, here is, um, this is your classic, your classic view of it in its, um, in its better heyday. And uh, and then here, I, I think there's another one. I've got another one here. Hang on, where did I put it? Uh, New Mill Photos. There we go. And this one here is a, a, a nice romantic little picture, isn't it? With the trees and stuff, just as you would imagine to see it. So it is a bit of a stark shock when you see it as it is today, of course. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what that building next to it is. Uh, and it must, I assume, have some relation to it whether the um, the flour was stored in there or I know that there was a power mill I think there's a saddlery in there now so I'm not 100% sure what that's all about um, here's some closer up pictures worth having a look at look at that and um, we've seen we've seen the state of it so uh, that's the metalwork there it's it I mean it's it's I suppose when it was built, maybe, you know, they thought metal would make it last longer and possibly it, it has. But it's the wood on the inside that I think is the real worry for them because that is rotting something terrible. Anyway, so there we go. That is it. Um, I um, appreciate you uh, checking out their Facebook page. I'll put the links later on. Can't do it now because it'll interrupt the, the system and stuff. But uh, there you are. Thank you very much. So that is the cross in hand windmill. And if you're in the area, do pop in and have a look at it. I, I mean, when I went up there, I was slightly nervous that someone might because there was it, it's not on an actual public bridle path. And I thought someone might, you know, come out and go, Oi, get off our land. What are you doing with your camera and nose and stuff? I just thought a bit of bit of publicity might be quite nice. Anyway, enough of windmills. And um, if you've got an interesting piece of heritage that you think is in desperate need of a bit of publicity from the uh, the bald explorer and a visitation, then do let me know and I will try and get over and see if I can get an interview. I'd like to interview the guys actually about the cross in hand and see what it is they're doing and, and so they can tell the story. Because if you're not involved, if it's not your windmill, I understand how it is, you know, who wants to put their pocket? Because there's so many people after your money. And that is a, a big problem. Anyway, oh, excuse me. Anyway, uh, and not least, of course, the old Vobi One-Eyed Kenobi, because um, he always thinks that uh, he could do with some patrons to support the Bald Explorer and everything that he gets up to. And if you're interested, then you could uh, do no finer thing than support the Bald Explorer himself by uh, giving a small amount of money for the price of a cup of coffee, in fact, a month. So a couple of quid a month would help me put petrol in to go out and find these things. Now I'm developing the live show as well as the walks. Um, my, you know, golly, today I've been so busy, I haven't been able to think. Um, I haven't even been able to visit my poor old mum in hospital because I wanted to get all of this lot done. No, that's not me sort of, you know, plying. But anyway, so the links are there somewhere on the Bald Explorer page and um, I think in the Bald Explorer group. But um, anybody who is a patron can say whether it's worth the cash or not. It's up to you. You can let me know. All right. So um, now I went for I went for another walk. I've got some more video for you. I went for Let's have a look. What have I got here? Let's have another bit of uh, music and um, let's have a let's have a little stroll, because on the way back from that, I passed. I've been through a place called Black Boys in East Sussex before. Lovely, lovely part of the world, as I said before. Lovely walks. And I thought, you know, I've gone all this way to do the cross in hand thing. It's a lovely day. I'm going to stop and do a, a walk that's unplanned. So uh, let's have a look at some of that. Hang on, let me get my music going. So there we go, a little bit of music in the background. And let's play the video. Again, this is not edited. This is just some some rushes. I shall put the thing out and we'll get it next week. So I started here by the uh, Black Boys Inn, which is a beautiful inn. 
Um, as there you can see, look, established 1389. And uh, in the summer, uh, and in those warm spring days, you can imagine, it's absolutely lovely sitting out there in the garden with a pint of best or whatever. And look, there's daffodils. You see the daffodils? Marvellous. Past the picket um, fence there, and across the road, across this, and it wasn't terribly busy, that road, um, there is Kiln Wood. So I took a little stroll into Kiln Wood, and uh, actually, as, I, as it happened, there were... It's, I think it's by the Woodland Trust have it. Beautiful um, wood. And I'm not sure what the trees are, I'm afraid. Not this section, although you'll see a bit later on. Um, there we go, kiln wood. A lot of coppice trees. And there were blokes there chopping them down, pulling bits down and making them all nice and tidy, which was great to see. Very slippy, I have to mention. They're very slippy mud. The other side of that, you get into... Um, you go past some more areas of uh, managed woodland here on this path. You can see I'm avoiding the main path because it was so slippy and muddy. And then on my left, I kept seeing these little trees. And I wasn't 100% sure what those little trees were at first. Uh, until I, eventually, I stopped and actually bothered to have a look at them. And, and I'm going to do that in a second. You'll see I stop and have a look. And, and I realised they are oak trees. This is a plantation of oak trees. Now that might not, you know, might not mean anything to you. Oh, here he is. Here is here's the bald one, gabbling away to the camera. We don't really want to hear what he says. But um, there we are, look. And it's got these weird-looking baubles, like on a Christmas tree. But what are they? And uh, I saw them with Ed Warren the other day. And they are oak apples. They are oak apples. There, there's a big close-up of one. And you can see there's the oak tree cut by the leaves. And, oh, and this is, uh, I, I meant to look this up. They, these were also hanging around. I don't know whether they're, it's alder, because it's, they're catkins. They're catkins from some tree, but I can't remember which one it is. But anyway, um, so... Now, an oak apple, for your information, we didn't know this, we had to look this up, Ed and I, the other day, a spongy spherical gall which forms on oak trees in response to the developing larvae of a gall wasp. A gall wasp, or a gall fly. I suppose you want to see what a picture of a gall wasp or a gall fly looks like. Well, oh my gall, hopefully, let's have a look, where are they? Uh, picture, picture, pictures, kiln wood, here we go, all right. OK, I'll, um, I'll kill the music. Um, yeah, let's get, to, let's get down to the gall wasp. Hold on a second, I have to do a few things here to get... This is, this is what a gall wasp looks like. It's, it's really a fly of some description. I don't know that it stings you, but um, the larvae seems to irritate the, the tree and it produces this spherical little gall and out comes this fly and they start coming out in the early spring. So I was quite interested in because I'd seen those and I thought it was some sort of weird nut. But uh, no, no, I'm the weird nut that's looking at it, of course. So, uh, yeah, so if you get the chance and you go past, this is, uh, yeah, Woodland Trust. There you go. Kiln Wood. Um, I wonder why it's called Kiln. I wonder if they used to do a lot of charcoal there. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Um, here's a terrific view. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Lovely. You can imagine that when it's less muddy, that would be very nice down there. Um, here's another here's another little view. This is uh, some of the woodland. This is what a woodland should look like, you know, with fallen trees, uh, lots of leaves, and it's all going to turn to mulch, and um, it's all going to be good. And then in the spring, you'll see all sorts of bits and pieces will pop up. Now, here's one of the blokes working away with a massive great big pole, um, pulling off some of the tall branches, and you can see all the branches around him. Fantastic, you know. I, w I wanted to go and I wanted to go and join him, but um, I wasn't really allowed to do that. So uh, anyway, so there we go. So I just thought you you might be interested in seeing that. Let's have a look in the old um, in the thing and see how you're doing. It's worth the cash, says Ed Warren. So there you go. Thank you, Ed. He's uh, selling the old um, the uh, patrons of Vobes. It would be lovely. David uh, Henry David says uh, thank you for telling us about the cross in hand mill I shall share the page on my page my pleasure this is what I'm here for and if you've got some stuff I really do would I would love to be able to promote more of this all this heritage stuff um, Malcolm says beautiful area near Halland um, yeah I drove I did drive through there and I thought that was lovely nice to hear the birds sing. oh yes 
I forgot I put I put a bit of bird song on the footage. I forgot about that. I was killing it with the music, wasn't I? So I knew I was going to cock it up. Oak apples, yes. Hazelnut catkins. Oh, they're hazel. Ah. I was reading about that the other day, and I was trying. And somebody sent me um, a chart with all the twigs, and then it had the catkins on. And I think there's only two or three varieties that have catkins. And I was thinking, which one is it? I I, I do know that alder is by water, but there was water near there, so that's where I got wrong. But I'm this year. I'm trying to get my um, I'm trying to get my my tree identification stuff going. Um, so there we go. Malcolm says, my wife and I grow oaks to plant on our travels. Well, brilliant. Well, that's an interest. I must do that. I must. What I should do. Can could you grow an oak? I couldn't grow it in the studio. I'd have to grow it outside and then bring it in and we could check the oak and see how big it is. Oaky doak. Is that maybe we can get. Is it too late? Well, it's probably too late now, isn't it? To get an acorn and start growing it because it should have. Or isn't it? I'd be interested in your thoughts. Um, hello, Terence, who's just joined us. Uh, big pole, ooh, matron. Oh, no, matron. <laughs> no, still not going to be out. Um, Paul Watts says, uh, did you get the gimbal plate fitted? I did get the gimbal plate fitted, thank you very much. And um, I didn't use it on that occasion, I have to say. I, I, it, it came this morning, uh, yesterday? Came yesterday? Was it yesterday? I can't remember now, I'm losing. Yeah, it came yesterday, and I, I fitted it on. It's a bit of a fiddle, isn't it? Once, but once it's on, it's great because you can get the view of the camera. Um, but on that particular occasion, I was running out the door, and I didn't have it. I didn't have it together. But uh, don't panic, don't panic. Thank you very much, Paul. It's very kind of you. I will. What's the time? Well, it's twenty thirty-two, and I want to try and stick to my half an hour. Otherwise, you'll just, you know, get bored of me. So I'm going to say a very big thank you very much to everybody for coming along and visiting. Um, may do one tomorrow and see what you see what the reaction is if you'd like me to do a, a one tomorrow then um you just have to let me know so in the meantime uh what have i got have i got some fading out music probably not so it's lovely to see you oh by the way trying a new camera lots of uh, lots of new gadgets here we're, we're, we're trying it all out if you've got some ideas for the show if you want to be a guest on the show very keen to have more people in the studio with me as we do the show so let me know it just means you've got to get down to worthing that's all but it's good fun or i can come and do an interview with you how about that as long as you're not the other side of the world but we might get skype fitted and all those sort of things so there we go another show done thank you very much it's been lovely to have your attention and thanks for all the messages and all that just let me know if you want more shows if you like the format i'm slowly be building this up I uh, want to get out and do some more stuff and uh, don't forget I will be uploading the edited um, the edited version of my visit to the cross in hand mill which you can then share as a, a standalone video uh, shortly after this show give me a, about half an hour or so I'm going to sort of tidy a few things up that will be uploaded it will be on Facebook and on YouTube and uh, tomorrow on the uh, Facebook and YouTube, the first of my three walks with Ed Warren on Blackdown and surrounding area. So thank you very much. Take care, one and all. Uh, from me, the Vobes, uh, thanks for watching. It's been lovely to have you here. Take care and goodbye.